Next, let's consider a polynomial transformation. Here I have a linear transformation denoted by the letter S because it is, after all, a very silly transformation with absolutely no applications, but it's a linear transformation nonetheless, so it makes for a perfectly good example. So any polynomial is transformed to twice itself plus x minus 1 times its derivative. So totally silly transformation, but just to get an idea of what it does, let's apply it to x squared plus 2x. Okay, and x squared plus 2x becomes twice itself, so 2x squared plus 2x plus x minus 1 times its derivative, which is 2x plus 2. 2x plus 2. All right, and now let's simplify the result, and we find collecting the powers, so x, 2x squared plus 2x squared, so it's 4x squared. Now let's collect the linear powers, so 4x, and then from here we'll get minus 2x, so that's minus, and then plus 2x, so it goes away, but just to make sure, 4x minus 2x makes 2x, and plus 2x goes back to 4x, so it's plus 4x, and the only term that's remaining is the constant term, which is minus 2. So that's what this silly linear transformation does. Now let's analyze it in component space, which is of course done by choosing a basis, decomposing uh, this vector with respect to that basis, and multiplying it by the matrix, its components by the matrix that represents this linear transformation. So quite a bit of work ahead of us. Let's start by picking a basis. How about uh, x minus 1, x plus 1, and x squared. All right, and we'll construct the matrix S sub b right here. Let's make sure that it will fit. S sub b equals, it's 3 by 3 because we're dealing with a three-dimensional space here. Okay, and here we go. The first column will correspond to the first element. So let's call this P1, P2, and this will be P3, and this polynomial we'll call P, P of x, P. So the first column will have S of P1 in it, more specifically the coefficients of S of P1 with respect to the same basis. So we have to compute this transformation applied to this vector. So it'll be, I don't want to waste too much space on it, twice itself, twice itself, plus x minus 1 times its derivative. There you go. And the answer is 3 times x minus 1. Look at that, we found an eigenfunction of this transformation, 3 times the original function. And now we have to decompose the result. This right here is S of P1, capital S of P1. And now capital S of P1 needs to be decomposed with respect to the same basis. And of course the coefficients are 3, 0, 0. And that's the first column of this matrix. 3, 0, 0. Great. Now let's move on to the second one, which is rather easy. This becomes x plus 1. So now we have to be a little bit careful. This will be in a moment s of p2, and it'll be 2x plus x, 3x, and then 3x, 3x plus 1. I was already beginning to decompose it in my mind with respect to this basis. All right, so not so easy, but, but hopefully not so difficult. So I'm thinking we'll take two of this one and subtract, nope, not so easy. That was right. Two of this polynomial and one of this polynomial does the trick. So one, two, zero. One, two, zero. 
Great. Finally, the same, the exact same thing. This is S of P2. The exact same thing for S of P3. So P3 equals X squared. So it's 2 times X squared times X minus 1 times its derivative. And that in a moment will be S of P3. So we have 2x squared, nope, not 2x squared, so 2x squared from here and 2x squared from here, so 4x squared, no x here, minus 2x, 2x squared, 2x squared, so 4x squared, and then minus 2x, minus 2x. And we now have to decompose this polynomial with respect to the same basis. So the one part that's obvious is that this gets a 4, and what's left is having to do minus 2x, which of course is minus this, minus this. So minus 1, minus 1, 4. Minus 1, minus 1, 4. And we have accomplished the task of calculating the matrix that represents this silly linear transformation with respect to this basis. Now let's just make sure once that it works by using this polynomial for which we know the answer. And our first task that we need to accomplish is to decompose uh, this polynomial with respect to the same basis. So if I have P equals, so of course it's one of the last one and the sum of these two. So one, 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 very nice. And so in order to evaluate S of P, we need to multiply this matrix by 1, 1, 1. And of course, this will sum up each of the rows. So we'll have 3, 1, 4. 3, 1, 4. 3. So this is with respect to the basis B. 3, 1, 4. 3, 1, 4 also with respect to the basis B. And let's see what this combination represents. And I'll erase this line because it was just workspace. All right, so what we need to do is add three of this plus one of this plus four of this. So we'll have four X squared, four X squared plus four X, And then this will give us minus three, and this will give us plus one, so minus two. So four x squared plus four x minus two, the exact same polynomial as before. So just to review, what we started out doing is evaluating this transformation applied to this polynomial right here. And without, when we did it without the use of any basis or any component spaces, we evaluated it directly and got this answer. Then we made a foray into the component space. And for that, we chose a basis, constructed the matrix that represents this linear transformation with respect to this basis, which has done a column at a time. We still haven't fully justified why it works, but we're experiencing over and over again with individual examples that it does work. And each one of these polynomials was calculated directly. So by calculating these polynomials, S of P1, S of P2, S of P3 directly, we're sort of letting this matrix absorb the linear transformation into it. It encodes the linear transformation by applying or having us apply the linear transformation to each of the basis vectors and then capturing that information as coefficients in a table. That's why it's possible, because the transformation was actually calculated directly for each of the polynomial, for each of the basis elements. So we computed the transformation. That was task well done. And then just to make sure one more time that it works, we took our original polynomial, which we used to, to experience this linear transformation, decomposed it with respect to the same basis. So we made the trip into the component space, then applied step number two, which is performing the linear transformation in the component space, and finally came out 
of the component space into the real world, completing the uh, component space journey, three, and lo and behold, got the exact same answer, convincing us one more time that this algorithm works.